Okay, so we're looking at number 34 in section 10.1, and it gives us the equation of an ellipse x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And this is the Cartesian equation of an ellipse, and it wants us to find parametric equations for uh, this ellipse. So let's go ahead and use our, our idea problem solving format and for I to identify we want to use the parametric equation for a circle to infer and it's parametric equation for a circle to infer the parametric equations for the ellipse. And then to begin to develop the problem, we want to draw a picture. And this uh, will kind of help us remember what this ellipse looks like. And this is the equation of the ellipse and Cartesian coordinates. And let's just uh, suppose A is 3 and B is 2 then we know that the ellipse would cross the x-axis at plus and minus 3 and it would cross the y-axis at plus and minus 2. In other words this A tells us the width or the half width of the ellipse in the horizontal direction and the B tells us the half height in the vertical direction. Uh, so our plan is we want to recall and graph a circle with its uh, parametric equations and then we want to use this to determine equations of an ellipse and then we want to double check by graphing and double checking by graphing kind of brings us from the evaluate to the assessment part of our idea problem solving format uh, but that's okay. If you get in the habit, when you think you have an equation that describes something, of graphing it and it's seeing if it looks like what you think it should look like, uh, that's a very powerful uh, double check to, uh, to keep you out of mistakes. Part B of the problem wants us to use the parametric equations to graph the ellipse with different values of A and B, and, and we'll go ahead and do that once we have the grapher up and going. And Part C wants us to discuss how the shape of the ellipse changes as B varies. Alright, so we've identified, we've developed, and now let's go ahead and evaluate. So, uh, if you recall how a circle goes, a circle could be written as x squared plus y squared equals r squared, but you could divide everything through by r and get x squared over r squared plus y squared over r squared equals 1 and that's just a circle of radius r in the xy plane and to recall the relevant parametric equations this is simply x of t is equal to r cosine t and y of t is equal to r sine t with t varying from 0 to 2 pi. Alright, so that's how the circle goes. Well, what is an ellipse anyway? An ellipse is sort of a flattened circle that's a little shorter in one dimension and a little longer in the other dimension. Well, if you think about it, the thing that's analogous to the radius of a circle are these parameters A and B which denote the semi-major and semi-minor axis or axes of our ellipse. So, as we scratch your head and think about it, 
we should realize that x of t would be a cosine t and y of t would be b sine t. And what this is going to do is this is going to trace out the same ellipse as t goes from 0 to 2 pi as we had originally graphed from the equation of the ellipse in Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so now we can double check by graphing, but when we graph it, we need to actually pick values for a and b. So part b of the problem says to use these parametric equations to graph the ellipse when a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 1, 2, 4, and 8. So we really have four different ellipses here to graph, right? a equals 3, b equals 1, a equals 3, b equals 2, a equals 3, b equals 4, and so on. And what we're expecting is, uh, just to draw the first one here, we're expecting the, the first one, a equals 3, to intersect the x-axis at plus 3 and minus 3, and to intersect the y-axis at plus 1 and minus 1. So we're expecting an ellipse that looks something like this. But our computer grapher, and we're going to use MATLAB for this, can do this much more quickly and uh, more perfectly and more efficiently. So we're going to go over to the computer and use MATLAB. And let me encourage you to get started with MATLAB, Mathematica, and or CalcTool early in the semester. Uh, cadets, especially uh, engineering, technology, science type majors at the Air Force Academy, you need to be as comfortable learning new technological programs, new software programs on the computer, as high school students are accustomed and skilled at learning new video games. Here we have the camera focused onto the video screen, and we have MATLAB up and running. So if we hit it with a Sims T real, what that does is that defines T as our parametric variable. And then we can hit it with an easy plot. And then you want to open parentheses. And the, the next argument after the open paren is the x uh, variable, or the, the, the x is a function of T in our parametric representation. So we want 3 times cosine t. And then, in this case, it wants uh, b equal to 1. So it would be 1 times sine of t. And we can plot that. And sometimes you need to tap through and bring up the uh, plot window. And we see, as we expected, it's an ellipse. And the x... Uh, extent is 3 and the y goes from negative 1 to 1 so that's just what we were expecting now to plot these different ellipses at the same time we need to tell MATLAB to hold on and what that does is it tells it MATLAB not to erase the previous plot when we come up with the next plot and this is a nice trick if you hit the up arrow it actually just cycles back through uh, the commands that you've done so it's pretty easy to change b equals to 2 and then we just tab over to the plot window and now we can see that we have two ellipses. Our first ellipse is a equals 3, b equals 1 and our second ellipse is a equals 3 and b equals 2. So this just demonstrates the power and ease of MATLAB, we still have hold on, so I don't think we need to turn it on again. We just need to change B equal to 4, and then tab back over to the plot window. And notice that it's changed the scale. X is still varying from negative 3 to 3, and now Y is going from negative 4 to 4 on the most recent outside ellipse. So now we can go ahead and make B equals to 8 and plot our fourth ellipse and once again the scale has been changed so now 
this is x equals negative 3 and x equals 3, y equals negative 8 and y equals 8. So we have all four ellipses up there at one time. And now we can address problem number C or part C of the problem which asks how does the shape of the ellipse change as B varies? Well, the ellipse gets taller as B varies. It really doesn't get narrower. Uh, X goes from negative 3 to 3 every time, so its width stays at 6, but its height uh, changes, and as B gets larger, the ellipse gets taller.